Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Today our guest is from the L.A. County Department of Public Social Services. Please join me in welcoming Cynthia Schmidt. How are you, Cynthia? Hi, thank you. Good morning. Great, great. So I am a DPSS commissioner. I'm sitting at a meeting and we have a presentation uh, about the uh, in-home uh, supportive services and you gave that presentation and as a commissioner but also as a, a citizen in the community I was just blown away by just the depth of that program and the impact of that program and uh, it just made me want to ensure that I had this opportunity to have this conversation for the greater good of those who are watching because at some point in time all of us need uh, someone in our families that can be supported and I want you to share what that program is all about and uh, and talk about your role okay well thank you first off for inviting sure. me and I'm excited about sharing this program because there's so many people that don't know about this program right. and the in-home supportive services program is it's a program that's an alternative to out-of-home care such right. as convalescent homes or boarding care right. and it allows our elderly and disabled to stay in the safety of their homes and we all know the studies show that people last longer when they're surrounded by their the comfort of their own home their pets mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. so this program allows others to be um, paid to give you services such as light housekeeping um, light shopping for the mm -hmm. food or mm -hmm. meal preparation and be able to stay in your home and, and so in essence it is what it says it is mm -hmm. as, as the commercial would say in that um, you can stay home I know my father uh, though he was in Alabama, that was a big deal for the family, was he couldn't stay on his own because he had gotten to the place with his health where he, he couldn't take care of himself, and yet home was the best place for him mentally and emotionally uh, to be. So for a family who thinks that this may be something that they need to consider, what would be the steps that they might have to uh, go through to engage with uh, your department? Okay, so the um, in-home supportive services program is um, of, is for elderly aged mm -hmm. over 65 okay. or persons with disability or persons who are blind. We have about um, children who are also disabled. We have about 6% of our caseload is children. Um, L.A. County serves 229,000 um, recipients under the IHSS program. Wow. So, and probably about 50% or 60% of their caregivers are family members. In this program, it's the IHSS recipient who actually hires their care provider. Um, to apply, it's a real simple process. You call into our, um, our phone number, mm -hmm. give basic information, mm -hmm. then we start that, the ball rolling. We'll send out a social worker to the home. Mm -hmm. And you do have to uh, be eligible for the Medi-Cal program or be receiving SSI. Mm -hmm. And you have to live in Los Angeles County. And you do have to provide a health certification form which is from a physician that says you are in need of a program like IHSS. Okay, and, and I would imagine that uh, with all this paperwork now, if I'm someone who's over 65 and I'm ailing, that then is incumbent upon the family to help them put that together, right? Or is that often a barrier or do you find that to be a pretty transparent process? So our social workers will actually handle the paperwork. Oh, okay. The only thing the, the recipient, the applicant, mm -hmm. or the family might have to handle is filling out some forms that say, I understand the rights and responsibilities of this form. Mm -hmm. If our applicant um, is as such they need a uh, authorized representative, a family member can be the authorized representative mm -hmm. and act on their behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly our social workers handle the paperwork. Okay. The only real paper that um, is in the hands of the applicant is the form that has to be filled out by the medical uh, doctor, the health certification mm -hmm. form. Now what about people who may have language barriers or cultural barriers? How do you address those types of scenarios? That's really not a barrier in Los Angeles County, Derek. Okay. It's uh, because we have all kinds of social workers or staff Great. who are bilingual um, that are there and available to us. And if not mm -hmm. available, we have access to language services. Okay. So that should not be a barrier. So if a family is looking out for that, that's not one thing that they need to be concerned no, about. No, and they, they don't need, need to translate for us. We'll, we'll provide the translation services because some okay. of our terms might be a little different and they might translate differently. Mm -hmm. So we'll provide the translator. In your experience being with this program, what are some of the, the key points that you think of that make you feel that it's so important to families and, and to our community? I think I mean, the first thing is that your loved one 
can stay in their home. And again, all kinds of studies show people just do better that. You put somebody in a convalescent home or then they get exposed to different things, it's just, it's not the best place to be. The other pe thing of this, it brings peace of mind to the family, mm -hmm. knowing that I can go to work and know that my loved one has a caregiver that comes and prepares their meals for them or maybe helps them with their using the restroom or getting the medicine for them mm -hmm. or getting that light housekeeping that they just can't do mm -hmm. and still allow them to be in the comfort of their home and I can be at work knowing that my loved one's okay. They're safe in their home. Now, how long is this, like when they, when someone's assigned, is it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or is it certain hours of the day? How does that work? So this is not a 24-7 okay. program. Okay. That would be a care, like a, right. a, a convalescent home or something. Right. This is um, the maximum hours of 283 you can get a month. What okay. our social workers do, they come and assess what are the service needs that you need. Gotcha. And then the provider comes in during that week and provides whatever authorized hours to work, they'll provide the services in those hours on a weekly basis. Okay. But not seven days a so week. So it's more to supplement what the family can do. Like you were saying, if I need to go to work, I can have someone there while I'm working and then get off early or adjust my schedule if that's possible to uh, complement what's already being done. So it would be that type of a scenario. Yes, and, and for those who don't have family members, mm -hmm. it's knowing that somebody's going to come in and check on me on a regular basis right. Right. and also that, you know, that they know if I don't answer the door on Monday, something might be wrong. So it's um, so some people don't have family members, and this right. is that program that allows somebody to come in and help them on a on a not a full time basis. When you look at the, the changing of demographics in America and more people getting you know older and the baby boomers, et cetera, are you finding that the enrollment in this program is increasing or stable, or what are some of the the changes that you're noticing? Well, I've noticed the in home supportive services program in LA County is grown leaps and bounds. Okay. At one time it was growing at 5%. Mm -hmm. It's probably the only growing program because you don't choose to get older, you do. Right. Right. And, and also more people with disabilities that are able to reside in their home and, and mm -hmm. become independent. That's probably the best part of this program. You right. can still stay independent knowing that you have services being given to you, uh, but you can still make decisions on your own and, and live a good life. Okay. Now, when you, we talk about one side of the equation, which is those who need the care, but the other side of the equation is those who provide the care. The providers. So let's talk about them. How can someone go about uh, becoming a provider of services? Okay. So two ways. One, you can sign up with a, um, a, a registry, <coughs> um, and you all providers, or a family member, or a person hires you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know you. You're my neighbor. Right. And I say, Derek, I'd like you to be my caregiver. Right. I'm going to call my social worker. We tell you... Derek, you're going to have to go to an orientation session. It's about a 45-minute video, a question-answer process, and then um, the provider's union gives you a, a benefits briefing. And then you have to do a criminal background check, which is through a live scan process. Um, once you pass that, then you can become an active provider and ready to work. And we recently changed our pay process. As you know, That uh, we went from paper timesheets to online electronic mm -hmm. timesheets, which has changed change the whole business uh, in, a, in a much yeah, better way. That was a big deal, right? Um, and when you, I don't know that you mentioned the pay, but if someone is a provider, what is the pay scale that they it's, would be It's 1260 an hour. Okay. So someone can pick up that extra change or have that as their supplemental income, depending on where they are in life, and uh, also at the same time do a greater good for a neighbor or a family member. Yes, we have 180,000 providers in L.A. County. Wow. And we have about 3,000 to 4,000 every month who attend one of our provider orientation sessions, mm -hmm. which we do anywhere between 75 and 80 a month. Mm -hmm. um, it's about, a, like I said, to our window. But, and that brings a lot of jobs, um, brings a lot of jobs into the, to the county. So. Right. When you talk to the providers themselves, what are some of the, uh, the comments that you hear back from that group of people about their experiences, be it a family member or... Uh, some, because I, I think you mentioned in our meeting, for instance, that some family members didn't know that they could be providers, right? Yes. There's a perception that I'm a family member and I can't get paid, paid to take care right. of a loved one. Right, right. And unfortunately, some people have to make choices. Mm -hmm. Do I take care of my family member or do I make that hour commute and maybe I don't know what's happening to my loved one? Mm -hmm. So, no, we encourage, we want 
the, we want our recipients, our, our IHSS recipients, mm -hmm. to pick somebody that they're comfortable with, and most likely it's a family member. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can be a family member. Uh, some of the um, some of the challenges sometimes is uh, getting over that perception. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a value judgment people make, and they need to not make that. Um, and the other piece is that um, the going back to the pay piece is that. Um, uh, it used to be that not knowing how to do the pay, the paper timesheets, we've made it a lot easier now with that electronic version. Uh, you can imagine for LA County, half a million paper timesheets every month. I can't imagine. <laughs> well, they were about this big and they right. would take up all this wall full of boxes. Right, right. But um, now we do it uh, where you submit it online and our care providers are reporting that three days after they submitted it to the IHSS recipient to authorize for payment, Three days later, if they have direct deposit, it's in the bank. Wow. Now, three months ago, it was five, five days. Now it's three. Wow. Okay. That's unheard of. It used to be weeks, months. You can imagine a paper timesheet mm -hmm. being mailed gets lost in the mail, mm -hmm. or you didn't fill it out and it got delayed. It's almost impossible to submit an incomplete timesheet. Right. It won't let you do it. So we're excited about it. We have um, almost 73% of everybody in LA County enrolled right now. Wow. And we just started officially. Uh, started um, September with all of our offices, but uh, July 1 we started with Lancaster as a pilot. So we're doing really well with 73 percent. Okay. And we're the first in the state to to uh, to roll this out. Now, um, again, maybe going back, but when these providers sign up to become a provider, or someone signs up, is there a particular training or orientations that they go through, and and if so, how does that work? So the the uh, orientation sessions I mentioned that we do yeah. 75 to 80 a month. It's about a two-hour window. Like I said, it's a 45-minute video. That tells them all their rights, responsibilities, things that you can get paid to do, things you can't get paid to do. Uh, like we don't pay for you to walk the dog or wash the cat. Um, so it gives them a good understanding of what to expect and also what they have rights because they also, you know, just like any employee, they would have rights. Um, so that orientation window provides that as well as the rest of the training is done by the IHSS recipient. I tell you um, what kind of services I need. I need uh, you to do light okay. housekeeping, okay. or I need you to, I'm physically disabled, I need you to rotate me so I don't get bed sores. Gosh. So that training is done by the recipient or the authorized rep family member. Okay. We need to take a break, but we got more to come okay. with you. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Cynthia Smith from the Department of Public Social Services of Los Angeles County. Stay tuned for more of Long Beach Lens.
Welcome back. Please join me in welcoming Cynthia Schmidt from the County Department of Public Social Services in Los Angeles. And you've been very informative on what is IHSS and, and how not only can uh, someone who is in need of the services receive them, but also how those who might want to provide those services uh, provide them. But Cynthia, I want to give uh, a bit more detailed insight because there are a lot of acronyms. Uh, and I want people to really learn from this interview, and I, I so appreciate you uh, agreeing to come on board because you're so knowledgeable about this and, and join us. So there's a term called EVV. Now, what is that? Okay, EVV, we do talk in acronyms. Yes. Electronic Visit Verification. Okay. And bottom line, what it was is a federal mandate that required states that have a in-home supportive services type program okay. to collect data, certain data, about the services provided, such as how many hours of services you received, what time of day did I start providing it, what time I ended, where did I provide those services. Um, you sign off that you received them, I signed off that I provided them, and <clears throat> I, I'm glad you brought that up because there was a lot of misunderstanding that it meant we were going to provide, um, have a GPS to monitor everybody's <laughs> move. And that was not the intent at all. Okay. It was basically like government does. They want to make sure money is spent where it's supposed to be spent. Gotcha. So for, for California, Los Angeles County, what that meant, in addition to the information we collect on our regular electronic timesheet, we added three more fields. So besides just the day you worked, the number of hours, both of our signatures, we added start time, stop time, location. And location is simply home, community, or both. We made it very easy in California, not intrusive at all. Um, some states apparently, <coughs> when they started implementing, they had them carrying a big phone with GPS. Um, California, we involved our stakeholders, a lot of communication, discussion, dialogue about how we wanted to shape California's uh, direction in bringing forth electronic visit verification. And overall, it's been, you know, it's, been, it's okay. It hasn't been what other states experience. Now, as we talk about uh, IHSS, this isn't just an LA County. This is California wide. So, it's a state if, program. If someone happens to be watching this interview, are there nuances that change from county to county, or is it pretty much uniform throughout the, the program? The program is pretty much the program. It's it's, it's okay. a state program, um, and in fact, if you left LA County, went somewhere else, or went from another California county, and were receiving IHSS we would simply do an inter-county transfer, very, very seamless to the recipient. Okay, so that's not something to be worried about then? No, no. Okay, now there was another called the uh, ESP system, and uh, I wanted to share what are some of the benefits, what is it, first of all, and what are some of the benefits of the system? So it's, ESP stands for Electronic Services Portal, Okay. and so our younger generation people will all understand all that stuff. Uh, for us older folks, I'll include mm -hmm. myself, it's just a, it's a portal that has a lot of self-service opportunities or uh, options uh, available. So I can download a W-2 form. I can download an address change. I can ask for my last three months of work history. So it's a self-help mm -hmm. online system. I can also check 24-7 the status of my timesheet and my pay. So for our care mm -hmm. providers, that's a really good news for them. Before, a lot of our calls we receive in our offices, and in our department would be, what's the status of my timesheet? What's the status of my pay? Mm -hmm. And now you know where it's at. Now you were talking earlier too about co-enrollment um, in other programs. Uh, how does that I'm work? Sorry, what was that? En enrollment in other programs, such as if uh, people were uh, receiving certain benefits, could they still receive IHSS support? And, and should someone be concerned about that or no? So, on in, well, they have to receive Medi-Cal right. or SSI. Okay. The, um, the other part you might be uh, interested in knowing is that SSI recipients mm -hmm. prior to June of this year could not get CalFresh benefits exactly. in California. Yeah. So the good news for our elderly and disabled mm -hmm. is as of June 1st, they could apply. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have a big percentage, uh, over 44% of our SSI recipients on the IHSS program, we have already connected them to our CalFresh benefits. And we're continuing to work to get the word out that you can get CalFresh benefits now. Mm -hmm. um, but for 
decades you were not able to get CalFresh benefits if you were getting SSI. So that's really good news for our IHSS recipients, as well as people that are not on IHSS that are getting SSI. I hope that word gets out because right. nobody should be making a choice of paying their rent or their light bills versus having food. We right. really want to make sure we connect our seniors um, and disabled persons to knowing that that's a benefit out there. Yeah. And all they have to do is call in and we'll get them connected. So, and that's interesting because you, you mentioned light bills, for instance, and nonprofits like us provide the LIHEAP program, exactly. which we can uh, help people with their utility bills. But I guess twofold question, how much do you uh, communicate with your various departments within the county to ensure that there's a handoff when it's appropriate, and how do you, if at all, interact with nonprofits in the communities to be sure that the citizenry knows what's available and how to access? Uh, is there any formality to that, or is that just something that you work out based on individual scenarios? I think a lot of it is when, as we, we become known, we have our department has a lot of um, interaction through our program staff. Mm -hmm. They reach out to different community-based um, programs and agencies okay. that offer these. Certainly, I don't think we know all in right, a right. county of Los Angeles. That would be impossible. <laughs> Correct. But because our offices are in general local, uh, ge geographic areas, right. they try to find the local um, resources available. Okay. So let me speak about IHSS program. Sure. Our social workers will come out and they will say, Derek, uh, did you know that they have this energy program available to you? Mm -hmm. Did you know that there's now a wristband for people that have dementia that it will help, called LA Found, that can help find you? Did you know that there's now uh, transportation services are available to you? Uh -huh. So that's what our social workers share um, when they do the one-on-one -on -one, uh, right. conversation. When we become um, a familiar or aware of new programs, we mm -hmm. try to pass that on. But certainly I think there's some opportunity to get more of that exchange mm -hmm. and build those resources. Mm -hmm. uh, local offices generally have in their services that are in their general area. Right. So as a nonprofit then, I'll speak again from that perspective, would it be incumbent upon the nonprofits to reach out then to those local offices because clearly your office wouldn't know that they necessarily exist, but everyone knows the county exists. So uh, is there a formality as to how the community reaches out to your offices? I don't think there's any formality. I think okay. it's sometimes just calling um, our departments, whether it okay. be, our, and I would say our headquarters, gotcha. because we have section of staff that are under certain programs, the CalFresh, mm -hmm. the Medi-Cal, the general relief, those program partners, they would partner up with the community resources and then make that knowledge and information available gotcha. to the many offices serving LA County. Okay. That would probably be the best way. Okay, sounds great. Now I know one thing here where our offices are located, uh, right across the parking lot is one of the local unions. And when I went over, ironically, to introduce myself, I was just coming from your presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, oh yeah, some of those, uh, some of our people are involved with that, and I thought, wow, why would a, a provider be, in, you know, in a union? And I know that you can't go into detail on that, but uh, can you just share what you can about the relationship between a possible union and a provider? So um, I mentioned earlier that we do those um, provider orientation mm -hmm. sessions, mm -hmm. and at the end of the information uh, video and the question and answer session. Then our uh, SEIU 2015 uh, local union mm -hmm. providers, they come in and do a presentation about the benefits of being a union member. Okay. And in, just in general, um, unions bargain and, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. try to get benefits for um, the, the, the their workers. members. Yeah. So I think beyond that, I would have to defer to them. But they're, right. they're our partners in helping stabilize and getting good providers so that our IHSS recipients which is do important. get good services. Which is important, yeah. We only have uh, a couple of minutes left, but I want to give you the opportunity to just share any other misunderstandings and uh, burst those myths that you may commonly hear that you want to be sure that people watching you now know that uh, you are here to serve. What would you say to them? I would say that the IHSS program, um, many people, they, they hear you might have a share of cost and they, they don't know what it's about. I would say one, call us. And it's a simple phone call. Just mm -hmm. call your name, your social security, your address, uh, and then we'll check out the rest in, and a phone number, and mm -hmm. we'll get in touch with you. And then if you don't have Medi-Cal, we will simultaneously do a Medi-Cal application, and so you get two for one uh, from our okay. department. And if, if you're eligible for our program and you have no share cost, it's, it's 
it's relatively mm -hmm. seamless there. If you have a share cost, then it's a simple matter of after you pay that, say it's $80, mm -hmm. you pay your $80, then IHSS will pay for the rest of the services wow. um, provided. The, um, I know we talked about it just right before the break and mm -hmm. uh, about, about the, uh, the kind of change, um, misunderstandings out there, but yeah. this is a program that, um, it again, it brings, it brings to our elderly and our disabled and to families an alternative than putting somebody in a, a convalescent home. Right. And sometimes you make that choice and it <coughs> starts going downhill from there. This is a program that allows them to stay in their home, um, creates a job for somebody, and also um, it, they can maintain their dignity, the comfort of being in their home, and give some relief to the family um, that maybe is spending every minute, they, free moment they have, of providing these services where you can have a caregiver come and give that. That's a perfect way to end because we're out of time, but you have so much more information. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. I, I really want to thank Cynthia Schmidt from the Los Angeles County Department of Public Social Services for joining us on today's show. Be sure to follow PadNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. We also welcome your comments and thoughts regarding this show as we strive to make Long Beach Lands a favorite source of local news, information, and entertainment. This show has been brought to you with support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lands.